order to get a good understanding of 5G, we need to know how this technology got started. Our first generation referred to as 1G got started in and around 1980. In 1990, we got our second cell phone generation. 3G came about in 1998 and we got 4G 10 years later in 2008 and finally the game changing 5G in 2019. In this video we will cover the basic technical foundation of the cellular network which is the first generation known as 1G. This will serve as an important foundation for 2G to 5G, which would follow. Here is a map of a basic cellular network. The mobile switching center provides communication between the base stations. It also provides communication between landlines connected to the central office. These lines connecting between the mobile switching center and the base stations are called the back hall. Any lines connecting between the central office and the mobile switching center are called trunk cables. This is the base station with many towers and antennas all connected to these towers. While these antennas are wired back to the hut right here. And within this hut is the transceiver equipment which communicates back to the mobile switching center. Also included in this hut is a frequency generator. The frequency generator generates frequencies which will carry your data from the hut to the antenna which will be transmitted to the cell phones within range. When you got your 1G cell phone from a local carrier, it was not compatible with other local carriers network. So there were no such thing as roaming on the 1G network. Compatibility internationally was even more of an issue. The European 1G network was called TAX, which stands for Total Access Communication System. Eastern Europe and Russia, the network was called NMT, which stands for Nordic Mobile Telephone. And in North America and Australia, the network was called AMPS, which stands for Advanced Mobile Phone System. In North America, the AMPS network got its frequencies from the Federal Communication Commission. The frequency range was between 850 megahertz up to 1900 megahertz. And these frequencies were evenly divided in 50 megahertz chunks between all the carriers. Each and every carrier was assigned a 50 MHz section of this frequency range. Now the carrier would go ahead and assign these frequencies to the base stations as they see fit. Now all telephone calls come in from the mobile switching center and using a backhaul to the base station. Now the base station would receive this information. This is all analog information by the way. These are all just telephone calls. Remember this is 1G. There weren't anything such as internet data. It was all just telephone calls and it's all analog. So this information comes into the transceiver. It could be one call. It could be hundreds of calls. This information would be sent from the transceiver to a multiplexer. Now coming from the mobile switching center to the base station is also a digital signal. This digital signal is used for signaling. Basically what it does with this digital signal is to tell the base station exactly what it should do. It sends it instructions over this digital signal. Um, this, these instructions may be ringing, it could be anything. Any, any communication between the mobile switch and send and the base station is sent over this digital channel. So in this particular case, it will be telling the base station it wants it to use a 900 megahertz uh, frequency to, to communicate with the cell phones. So the transceiver will send this information to the frequency generator where it will generate a 900 megahertz frequency and send off to the multiplexer. 
Once this multiplexer receives this information, it would multiplex this frequency with all the telephone numbers it has in here. And the way this is done is that it divides this 900 megahertz frequency band into 30 kilohertz channels. And each one of these 30 kilohertz channels has a telephone number. So every telephone number, even if it is a hundred different telephones or even more, they would all have a 30 kilohertz channel. So this is the bandwidth of each one of these telephone lines. They only have 30 kilohertz of bandwidth per telephone number. So once this multiplexing is done within the multiplexer, this multiplex signal is sent out as an electrical signal from the multiplexer to the antenna. Once the antenna receives this information, it will convert it from an electrical signal to an electromagnetic signal and send it out to the cell phones. The cell phones would receive this information. Of course, it would be just a 30 kilohertz band going to each telephone at the 900 megahertz frequency. Each cell phone would receive their intended information within a 30 kilohertz channel at 900 megahertz. Now transmitting back from the phone to the base station, the phone would use a different frequency also at 30 kilohertz to transmit back. So it's one frequency being received from the tower and another frequency transmitting back to the tower. So as you can see, one G use full duplex communication. Now with 1G, antennas were mounted very high so that they can transmit the signal a distance as far as 45 miles away from the base station. These phones had very limited battery life, uh, partly because of the distance that they had to transmit, which was as much as 45 miles away from the base station. Now these lines were also very noisy, and the reason for this is because it was an analog signal being transmitted, so you would experience much electromagnetic interference. Now security was another problem. Because there were no encryption on these lines, there were problems with eavesdropping and also hackers using a scanner to scan the frequency and then using a simple computer to clone these phones. Um, so there were a lot of clone phones out there and providers were obviously losing a lot of revenue because of that. Now the speed was very slow, just at 2.5 kilobits per second. That is why you couldn't have data communication because the speed was so slow. These phones were not capable of data at all, just voice calls. They used a 30 kilohertz bandwidth uh, which and they were only able to get 2.5 kilobits per second of data which was extremely slow not fast enough for data communication I hope this video has been helpful to you this was the third of three videos on the cell phone if you didn't get to see the first two videos I'll have links to those videos in the description below the next video would be on 2G and then we'll have videos on 3G, 4G, and 5G as well. So if you haven't done so as yet, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button below so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.